Hey guys, Colin here, hope you're well. Today we are gonna be reverse engineering malicious JavaScript dropper file. This is one of my favorite samples, uh, or certainly one of my favorite flavors of malware to reverse engineer. Anything that's JavaScript related definitely gets me going, and anything that's uh, got a dropper built into it as well is definitely exciting. So uh, this is a really cool sample. The JavaScript itself drops the netwire wrap binary to the victim machine. It's definitely something you don't want in your environment. And I'm gonna teach you how to reverse engineer this code really, really quickly so you can pick apart the, the layers of JavaScript and and get yourself the decoded contents of the malicious binary so then you can then perform some proper analysis of what's going on. So this particular sample was taken from VirusTotal. I'll post the hash in the description. Uh, and this came about just a few days ago and was being distributed via email uh, to a link to download the JavaScript file in the hope that the victim would execute the JavaScript which would then drop the malicious binary to the machine and start executing it right away. So a uh, pretty tasty piece of code. And here if we, uh, and what I'm gonna do, actually this is the original, so I'm just gonna copy the, the, the data to a new file I'm going to call it netwire.js because that's the uh, the name of the malware that it drops. Um, and what we could see, the first thing I tend to do is just eyeball the code a little bit and see if there's anything uh, that sticks out at me that we need to pay attention to. And the first thing I see is this big long variable being defined here on line five. And we can see actually that uh, Sublime Text counts the characters for me as uh, just over 10,000 characters long in this particular string. So a fairly hefty piece of data. And that's likely uh, has the contents of the malicious binary built into it. Uh, and there's probably going to be some kind of decoding routine going on um, at runtime in order to drop that to disk uh, and write the binary to disk and then obviously execute it. Our job here is to reverse engineer that, pick it apart uh, so we can see the steps that the code is taking and we can understand exactly what's going on as well. So what we can see here is a, a try catch block straight after that variable being defined and all that's doing is throwing a purposeful exception to invoke this particular function here and this particular function on row 15 or line 15 has a few variables being defined and it has what looks like an alphabet being being declared as well into an array here. So if you're familiar with the ASCII table, you'll know that uh, capital A is the number 65 in decimal, 66 is B, 67 is C, etc. So it looks like we've got a, um, an alphabet being declared here in an array. And then the next line here, that array is being converted from its decimal representation in an array into a string. So we can actually just take this out of our code uh, and we can just see what this equates to really, really quickly. So if we console.log, uh, the particular variable. Let me just call this colin.js for now. Let me move to my terminal window. Uh, and we can see if we do node colin, we can see the, the uh, alphabet that's being declared here uh, is, basic, is a base64 alphabet. And we know this because we've got capital letters through the alphabet, we've got the lowercase alphabet, we've got zero to nine, and we've also got these three characters at the end, plus, forward slash, and equals, and that makes up the base64 alphabet. So cool, what we're dealing with is base64 uh, encoded string, probably. Uh, but what we can see right after the alphabet being defined is we can see a replacement, a, reg a regular expression replacement routine going on. And what's the string that's being manipulated is our big long string here on line five that was previously declared. And what this is saying is it's gonna replace anything. Um, so anything that doesn't equal uh, the characters that follow the carrot. So the carrot means basically if it doesn't equal the, whatever um, is in this particular bracket, uh, then just replace it with in here it's going to replace it with nothing. So if in this string, if, if there's a character that does not equal A to Z in uppercase, A to Z in lowercase and zero through nine or a plus slash or equals, then replace it with nothing. And that's really interesting because we've got a base64 alphabet and now we've got um, this particular uh, uh, method, regular expression method being um, manipulated over this, this string to make, to clean it, to basically make it into a base64 encoded string that's valid. Uh, so that's really interesting. So it, that, what that tells me is that the rest of it, the rest of the code that probably follows, is just literally gonna be the base64 decoding routine of that particular string. And that's super easy for us to um, actually do something with. So if we go through this do uh, while loop here, so do while loops aren't really uh, used that much in JavaScript nowadays, but uh, maybe the bad guys uh, thought that uh, it would throw people off their analysis, I don't know. But we have a do while loop, and everything within the do while loop is gonna iterate uh, until it reaches the uh, the end of our big long string. So it's gonna iterate over the length of our big long string and then do something with it. And there's some string manipulation stuff going on here. And we don't really need to walk through it, but actually what we're interested in is the return value. So we really wanna see what is being spat out at the at the end of this particular function. So rather than returning the, uh, that particular variable, I'm gonna co uh, comment it out and I'm gonna console.log uh, what would have been the return um, it, of that particular function. So if I run this, so I run netwire.js, 
you can see that nothing happened on my terminal window. Uh, and that's because in this particular instance, we have a try catch block. And even in the, uh, in the catch block, uh, there's going to be an error thrown. And actually, no, JS doesn't support um, the, the function alert or the method call to alert. So actually, even in the catch block, that's going to throw an exception during my analysis. So I need to just get rid of that for a moment. And I need to invoke this particular function manually myself. Uh, and let me do it again. So node netwire. And you can see that now it's thinking about it a little bit and it might just take a second or two to spit out the contents to my terminal window. And what we should get right in front of us here is what looks to be more valid JavaScript. And we can see here we've got loads of encoded data going on as well. So uh, let's uh, obviously not readable in the terminal window. Let's redirect the output to another file. We'll just call it out.js. We'll let it run for a few seconds again, uh, just, in, just for it to do that. And then we're gonna take a look at out.js and we'll prettify it a little bit and we'll see exactly what was being, um, what was being performed there. So let's open out.js. Here we go, uh, it's already nice and pretty. And okay, we've got some, some real funky stuff going on here. We've got like uh, all these forwards and backwards and um, loads of stuff which is uh, pretty new to, to most people if you're not familiar with JavaScript as to what is going on here. Uh, and we'll just scroll right through this. this is, that's a really big function. So we've got a function here which is 419 lines of JavaScript. So that's pretty meaty and we definitely don't wanna be walking through that ourselves. So we'll figure out in just a minute exactly what that's doing. Uh, we can see some other stuff going on here. Now actually, this. This, this function call that we've got here should actually look really familiar because um, whilst it's not um, obfuscated in the same way that we just dealt with, uh, if I flip back to, to this particular routine that we've just looked at, we've got an alphabet being defined here. Uh, and guess what? It's the base64 alphabet. We've got this do while loop, which is being iterated, uh, being iterated up until the length of a particular string. And that particular string is being passed as an argument to this function. Uh, and there's a regular expression replacement going on to make sure that it's a valid base64 encoded string. So this is a pretty much essentially what we've just seen in the previous uh, piece of code. So this is a base64 decoding routine. So that's great, we know exactly what that is, so we can come back to it. it looks like we've got a massive big long string here again, uh, which is uh, which is great. Um, and that's again gonna be probably house the encoded contents of the, of the binary that we're interested in. So this is super interesting. And hey, look, guess what? We've got a function called here to a function called drop file. Well, that's pretty indicative of what's going on here. That function is gonna drop the file probably to the disk. And you can see there's a number of parameters which are being passed to uh, the function drop file. And it looks like they're encoded parameters as well. So it looks like there's a routine here, this uh, rzmx blah, 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 uh, which um, must perform some kind of uh, decoding routine to, to make sure that it passes it some clean content. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. But this drop file uh, method is definitely something we want to pay, pay attention to. Uh, so we can see we've got another function call here, which looks a bit funky. And we'll come back to this in just a second. Uh, but maybe some more manipulation stuff going on that we need to take some some interest in. So let's have a look at, and we, I'm here we reach the bottom of the code pretty much. So we're, let's have a look at this drop file function because that's really the tasty stuff that we're interested in. And we can see it takes one, two, three, four parameters as its input. We can see it's an active X object being defined. Uh, we can also see that uh, we can see this string here is something dot expand environment strings. Well, that suggests that uh, if you have an environment string that might be like percent temp or percent app data, so it could be using like a, um, the environment variables within the Windows system to declare itself a file name, for example. Um, and that's probably what that's doing. And then we have this try catch block, which is declaring a new variable. Um, and we can see here that uh, we have a, a write all method and then we have a run method. So this is likely the routine, which is writing all the all of the uh, bytes to disk. And then once the, that file has been created, it's then the malware is then going to execute it without obviously the user having to uh, double click on anything and interact with the malware. Uh, so these are definitely the uh, the key points that we want to take a look at here. So in this write all method, we have several, we have a parameter that's being passed to write all. And let me just kind of give you some spaces um, in amongst this, this bracket notation. So that the parameter which is being passed is actually the product of two functions. Uh, so we have here, um, we have the, the, the kind of, um, uh, this, the, the overarching uh, function call, this ERQ, blah, blah, blah. And then that itself takes a parameter uh, and the parameter it's, it's, it's uh, taking is actually the product of another function call. So this gets a little bit messy, but let's kind of bear with it and just step through it slightly. Uh, so we can see here that actually the, the, the main piece of, uh, the main variable which is being uh, manipulated by these two functions before it gets written is this FGT, uh, blah, blah, blah. And if we scroll up just a little bit, we can see the FGT, 
see is actually this big, long, massive string that we're interested in. So let's stay with this for a while. So this um, uh, th this big, long string gets passed to RZQQQ. Uh, and if we just do a quick search for RZQ, we can see here it goes, this is the base64 decoding routine that we're interested in. Uh, so let's do, why don't we do um, a, a, a control replace, uh, control F and replace, and we'll just replace that with base64 decoding, uh, just to make it kind of easy for us to understand. Oops. Um, let me make sure I uh, do that properly. Base64 decoding, uh, no matches found. I don't know why that's not working, whatever. Um, but you could do that anyway. Um, and then you could, uh, so we have this Base64 decoding routine going on here. Uh, so once we've got this Base64 decoded output of the encoded string, uh, we then pass it to this particular function, this ERQUN, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and this is this other weird piece of uh, piece of code, this other function that we don't necessarily know what it does yet. So let me just kind of uh, give us a space here. Um, this looks to me like uh, some kind of encryption or decryption algorithm just solely because we've got these variables s with the bracket notation going uh, iterating over um, iterating over its position within a for loop uh, is very indicative of um, of an encryption uh, or, or decryption routine going on here this particular variable this G GSK blah 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 uh, looks definitely uh, very suspiciously like a key that would be used in a, in a decoding routine and I don't really know what this is yet so why don't I in terms of my analysis we can see here the 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 um, kind of concatenation of the string that's being returned, this temp string, temp string is being returned as a product of the uh, function. Um, the final call here is this, con this kind of concatenation of whatever this is being XORed with whatever this is. So when I see kind of code that I can pick out of um, of a sample, you know, do you know what? Sometimes the best thing is to Google it. So let's Google this code in, in, in um, um, in, in our parentheses here, and we can see here actually it's part of rc4.php. Someone's written this uh, this rc4 code, and we can see very very uh, similar code to what we've just seen here. So if we flip back to the JavaScript itself, we can see something here being XORed with uh, our particular uh, string of interest, and we can see that on this particular line here, and that's actually almost identical to what we've seen in JavaScript. We can see just a few lines above here, i and j being the, being um, iterated over modulo 256, and we see exactly the same thing here i and j i plus one j plus s uh, si modulo 256 so we've got very very similar code so that would lead me to believe that this is an rc4 uh, decoding routine uh, and here we've got the key for rc4 as well so that's great so we know that so these these two the products of these two functions first off we have clean base64 uh, code decoded content and that clean base64 decoded content is then being passed through uh, an rc4 decryption algorithm once that's uh, been done that's going to be left with the raw bytes and then that's going to be written to disk. So that's cool. Um, that's everything realistically we need to understand about this particular code. We could step through every line if we want to, but realistically that's all we're interested in. The next stage of the code is to actually run the malware. Um, now for all intents and purposes, we don't want to run this malware. We actually want to just have the file drop to disk so, so then we can take it and do some analysis on it. So let's comment that out for now. Uh, and then what we can do actually is save this and we can take this particular file and we can execute it in our virtual machine. So here we've got a um, virtual machine of Windows 7. Uh, I've just dropped the, the JavaScript to disk here uh, and let me open this and hopefully it will run and we see here object expected uh, okay but did anything drop to disk uh, let's have a look and see uh, I'm kind of guessing as to where it would write the uh, malicious file I've just guessed right that it happens to be in app data roaming and we've got the executable that dro that's actually dropped to disk you might be interested as to why that threw an error just right at the end well actually what we see here is after the the file has been written to disk we've got this function call here and if we just do a control F we see actually that function uh, is never declared within the code so it's almost like a purposeful error that the bad guys have, uh, have thrown there maybe that's just to give the user some kind of um, reaction when they've double clicked that JavaScript file that maybe the, they, the user would think that something didn't work and therefore uh, the code is benign. Obviously we know different because we've now got this weird executable that's being dropped to the disk. Um, so that's cool. And actually, if you did want to confirm that uh, the, the, the actual location of the file being written, well, then you could probably, um, you know, step through this this routine here uh, and, you know, kind of debug the the, uh, the file path yourself just to confirm that it was being dropped to app data. I must have done that previously and, and remembered it, to be honest with you, because I don't often guess it that right. Uh, however, this is the, the, the weird executable that's being dropped to disk. And, and, you know, 
know, let's run it again and just see whether or not we get another one. Uh, we do indeed get another one uh, that's that's popped up and that's got another random name. And if we did another one, that's got another random name uh, as well. Uh, but let's hash all these files. They should probably hash to the uh, to the same MD5. Um, we'll stick them in here and we can see, yeah, indeed, they do hash to the same MD5. So that's good. The malware hasn't executed and we know this is Netwire Rat, so we can then go and perform some additional analysis on this executable. You could stick it, you could do some behavioral analysis, you could stick it in your lab uh, in IDA Pro, in, in, um, in Oli Debug, etc., and perform some additional analysis, but that's down to you. Uh, okay, hope you've enjoyed that. That's definitely all I want to show you for today and uh, super interesting when we get some malicious JavaScript like this to, to, uh, to go through. Thanks, guys.